of law enforcement to handle that task, but they have to be comfortable coming to those deputies or to a deputy supervisor and actually discussing that without fear of any retribution or that they're going to upset someone. So I'd like to establish a liaison with all the different segments of the county, the different groups, and meet with them regularly and try to foster and build those bridges. Thank you. Boy. Uh, at one time there they had residential deputies up on the West End. The two deputies left. They was never replaced. And I think that's because of money. But they found a place to live up there. They lived up there. Uh, one of them lived in uh, one of them lived in uh, Cotopaxi or Texas Creek area and the other one lived I think in the Cotopaxi area. So I think what I need to do is what we need to do is put place two more residential deputies up there. I would have to go to the county commissioners. I would talk to them. We keep forgetting about the county commissioners and the communications that we have to have between them in order to make things happen. But the residential deputies up there are so important. And it's that, in fact, right now, Copper Gelch, uh, County Road 27A, and up through there, there's a little over 4,000 people living up there now. That's amazing. And then I don't know what the population is from Texas Creek on up, but it's got to be pretty much the same thing. So when you, you're running code from Penrose to Copper Gilch, uh, you know, this, is, this isn't, somebody's going to get hurt. So the residential deputy is really, really very important. You, you, you put a sergeant up there, you put two more deputies up there. I think it needs three to start with, but I will settle for one. Uh, if the commissioners will allow us to do that. And the other thing is, is uh, again, with them not being replaced and we're five short in patrol, I would ask the commissioners to allow me to go ahead and place the two up there, bring the other three down here if we could actually go back up the full staff. Right now, I don't know where we're at really on, uh, on money-wise. The new budget just hasn't been out yet, so they're still working on the budget. Uh, so until we actually see the budget of what we can do you get with the commissioners and, and the financial officer and the, you know, this is we're kind of, our hands are kind of tied. Ten but seconds. I really honestly believe there needs to be residential deputies up on the West End. Thank you very much. Uh, Skip, you have a follow-up? Yes, I'm half disappointed, Mr. Canberra. The county commissioners do not have anything to say where a person lives in this county or where he works. So having them you know, going to the county commissioners and asking permission for a deputy to live up there is, to me, it's bypassing the system. It seems like that's the responsibility. It is the responsibility of the sheriff for the safety and the welfare. And there is housing up there. It is available. So um, just want to bring that forward. I think that county commissioners don't care where a deputy lives as long as the job is being done and they don't have to answer to the community why it's not. Uh, yes, uh, Boyd has a response. Well, I disagree with Skip. I think county commissioners has a lot to do with that because if you don't communicate with the county commissioners, they're in control of your budget. So you got to work that together with the commissioners in order to do the right, proper thing for this county. And if you don't, then you're not going to get the budget you need to make this thing work. It's all about the money and the county commissioners and the budget, and they control the money. So if they don't have the money, you can't put it up there. So you've got to find somebody that will live up there with the little amount of money that we can give them. And then it's going to have to be a seasoned a deputy up there that's wanting again to come down from maybe a big city to where they're wanting to get out of the fast lane and just be a, a cop and take care of the problems. Somebody that's got to be a people's person that's got to deal with 4,000 people up Copper Gilch, 4,000 up Howard, be able to talk to them, communicate with them, and, and they all get to know each other. That eliminates a lot of the problem. Community involvement is so important with the people of this community and the Sheriff's Department. You've got to have community involvement. Mr. Cooper, do you want to weigh in on that? The community involvement is essential. Uh, I think we all agree on that. I think we we're just looking at different ways of formulating that. Uh, I like working directly with people in groups. Uh, I don't know about how realistic it is to actually have a West End deputy that's living up there now. Uh, I've inquired into that, and uh, I'm not, I've not been hugely successful. Thank you. Skip, you had a brief, yeah. brief, very yeah. brief comment. Very brief. I'm not trying to undermine or circumvent the county commissioners. I know they set the budget, and you have to work with them. But 
somewhere, some things they have no authority over, and deputy placement is one of the one of the issues. Other than that, working with the county commissioners, I've known them, know a lot of them, I've known a couple of them for quite a while, and I believe working with them and getting the job done for the citizens of the county. Thank you, Skip. <coughs> okay, here's a hot potato. The tax increase specifically allocated to the Sheriff's Department a few years ago has provided additional funds. At this time, do you believe your budget is adequate? And if not, do you plan to ask for more funds in the future in the form of a tax increase? And we'll start with Mr. Cooper. I don't know what the uh, current budget is. Uh, it hasn't been set for 2019 to my knowledge. Uh, I haven't seen any preliminary uh, figures on the 2018 budget. Uh, I did have some budget figures for years previously, and the budget did appear to be adequate. I know the tax increase was for specific items which needed to be addressed. Those were the kitchen uh, and the remodeling in the jail. Uh, had those not happened, and I think the reality is, is that the county could have been looking at some serious lawsuits. I think that because of issues that the office has been through uh, in the last couple of years, that if that uh, tax were to go to a vote today that it would not pass. Uh, would I be asking for more money later on? Probably. But again, I would like to look at the budget. I'd like to uh, review it for the previous four years and see where those monies have gone, how they've been spent, uh, what do we need, what are the future needs of the county. I know that we're about at the lease on the uh, patrol vehicles and for any law enforcement organization that's a huge expense. Uh, because they do not get the treatment that your vehicle or my personal vehicles get. Thank you. Skip? Well, I don't know anybody out there who want to vote for an increase the way it is. And that seems to be one of the big issues I get talked about all the time. But I've looked at the budget. I've looked at 2016. I've looked at 17. I've looked at 18. And it's hard to figure out what's going on with it. I see a medical bill seven, in 2016, 750 some thousand dollars. I don't know if that's medical transport from the jail to the hospital, or does that include the insurance of the patrol officers? It may be all combined. It's a pretty good chunk of money if it's just amount from the jail for prisoner care to the hospital. So it's got to be looked at. I've owned and operated four businesses, and they're still in a successful business, starting from one account. And so it just has to imagine to manage the money. We're going to have to look at each item, see if it's being wasted, see how it's being spent, see if it's duplication in services, and go from that point on. It's going to be a job. It's going to take somebody to have the background in management and running business, and it's going to be part of the sheriff, and it's going to be a job, but I believe I can sort it out. Thank you, Skip. <coughs> Mr. Canterbury. Would you read the Would you read the points, please? Sure. <clears throat> The tax increase specifically allocated to the Sheriff's Department a few years ago has provided additional funds. At this time, do you believe that your budget is adequate if elected? And if not, do you plan to ask for additional money uh, in the form of a tax increase request? I believe your A1 taxes went, went to use for a new kitchen, uh, remodel the jail, uh, something that was had to be done, had to be because of the liability. So I think it was used in the right and proper places. I don't think anybody has done anything else with it. And would I support it again in 2020? Yes, I would. I would hope that it would pass. Uh, we need that tax money, not just for us, but for the people of this community. And therefore, the people of this community, again, uh, they'd be, the jail and the remodel it, that was basically for, because it needed to be and liability was a big issue. So we used that in, uh, and so I do agree with that. Uh, more money in the budget. I, I believe we're under budget right now. I haven't seen anything on the 2019. I did see 2018. And that budget to me was really, really hard to read and understand. There's no really line items on it, so I don't know where part of this money went or probably just kind of communicated. And, and uh, you know, I, I know that at one time that, that there was $14,000 spent on painting the sheriff's rims and it was put under maintenance and slid through and was paid. I don't know why you have to spend 14000 on rims when we're, when we're that short of budget. But uh, do I need an increase in budget? I believe we do. 
I don't believe, I think the reason we're so shorthanded today is because we don't have the money to do a rehire, to hire these deputies back. So until the, 19, the 2019 budget is done, we're probably not gonna get the rehires until them are done. And I think that they need to really look at that, that this money for these deputies and get, up, get the people back up to standards where we can have our full force in the Sheriff's Department and work this for the people again. What we're doing is for, the, for you, the people. We've got to be able to support and protect our people and property. Thank you very much. This is for all three. Um, what is your position uh, on volunteer posses? And if elected, would you commit to, or at least consider, studying the possibility of forming a posse for Fremont County? And we'll start with uh, Mr. Cooper. The uh, Posse and Reserve program for 1As almost went away a couple of years ago because of an unfortunate incident that we had in the southwest part of the United States where a volunteer uh, reserve officer for a municipal police department was shot and killed and it became apparent that the state has no insurance uh, to cover that and so the state passed a series of laws which greatly restricted the use of volunteers in that capacity. Now, that's, that's the easy way out is to say the state says I can't do a posse. The reality is, is that the sheriff can do the posse, but you have to look at exactly what your people are doing. You have to train them, and you have to stay within the state statutes and guidelines of, uh, so that you don't incur any liability for your county. There are a lot of other ways that we can use volunteers. They can be used in the office staff. Uh, we use a lot of college uh, interns that come to the Canyon City Police Department. They do filing. They clean the yard in some cases. They may assist in uh, collating <laughs> data that come from uh, various traffic initiatives or pawn shop initiatives. Uh, they're allowed to do all of those things. So there are other ways that the office can use volunteer personnel. You can't use a volunteer to supplant or to supplement a paid employee because that's a violation of the Fair Labor Standards Act. So I would use volunteers, I would consider a volunteer reserve force, but there would be limitations on how they're deployed. Thank you, Mr. Canterbury. And I agree, I, I think that we need a reserve unit. I think we need one really bad on the west end, and we need to combine one, we keep it a limited amount of group. We have our meetings with them every month, we find out what's going on, their eyes become our eyes, and they become a great asset to the community, the pool community, and uh, so I think that the reserve, and it is the liability of the insurance and that sort of thing. Uh, and I'd have to get with Brenda, the county attorney as well, and find out just the legalities of what we could do and where we could go with it. Uh, I, uh, my understanding was that when they did away with it here, that uh, she got involved in it somehow and talked to, to the sheriff, current of the sheriff, and I'm not sure what was said there, so I would have to go back to her just to be on the safe side, and that way I would know exactly what we can do and what we can't do. Thank you very much. Skip? Well, I'll have to disagree with Mr. Cooper. I think if you want to volunteer and rake your yard, you probably want to do it at home. You're not going to mess around doing it at the sheriff's office. Um, yes, I'm going to start the posse back up. I checked with the um, Custer County. They run a posse up there. They've got seasoned officers. They've got volunteers that are post-certified. They've got volunteers that are not post-certified, but they give them training and they ride with the post-certified officers and volunteer, like the uh, the prison uh, guards and uh, other people that are ex-military with law enforcement, got post-certification. So yes, I definitely plan on starting it up. It's going to have some training with these people. I'm not having a bunch of gunslinging um, civilians riding around patrol cars. So it's definitely going to have training. It's going to be professional. And training is going to be the key word to it. So. Yes, I'm going to start the posse up, and I'm also going to look at the mounted rangers to get them going and get them involved, because it's definitely an asset, and it definitely needs to help our community, and it will be started. Thank you. A question from the audience. Another question for all three candidates. I've heard comments Excuse made about... Excuse me, you have a microphone handy. I don't need one. <laughs> I've heard comments made by the candidates in reference to the volunteers at the Sheriff's Office. I'm a former volunteer in that Sheriff's Office. Unbeknownst to you, maybe because you haven't worked there, 
There are numerous volunteers and organizations in that sheriff's office that are mandated by Colorado Revised Statute. Number one, search and rescue. Number two, a wildland fire team. These people are dedicated. They give their time and their effort. With the comments I've heard here, how are you going to support them? Uh, who wants to start? Go ahead, Mr. Cooper. I believe that uh, what we were talking about did not uh, was not the search and rescue or the other organizations. It's about you people acting in a patrol capacity. That was my understanding. You made a comment, Alan, that a volunteer cannot take a paid person's position. Search and rescue is per 100% volunteer. There's no paid people there, except their, their oversight. There's many volunteer organizations in the Fremont County that are strictly 100% volunteer, not paid. Okay? No, no they, argument. Right. Fremont Thank Search you. and but, Rescue is yeah. not part of the, uh, is not mandated by state statutes. Yes, it is. Office of sheriff. Yes, it is. It is mandated by state statutes. Skip, you have a comment? Yes. It's, uh, yes. The, the sheriff's office is responsible for the search and rescue to make sure that, that they get activated and the search and rescue is a volunteer. I've worked with search and rescue. They do a good job and that's why I'm saying I wouldn't have a heartburn with them volunteering to be in the posse also because they're a good unit, they're understaffed and they work hard. I've seen them do some amazing things with what they work with. So, um, But there was nothing meant towards the volunteers for the search and rescue. It's just, like I say, it's a sheriff's posse, but there is a lot of volunteers in the sheriff's office, and I plan on utilizing them all. Thank you, no Steve. Boyd, you have a comment? Well, I don't know. Thank you, Boyd. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, yes, okay. We'll let that one go then. Um, as sheriff, would you maintain the current direction of the sheriff's office, or would you change course, and if so, how? And we'll start with Boyd. Well, I think it needs to be changed. I think the course needs to be changed, and we need to, again, get with what we have there that's working there, our deputies, and find out how we can change it to better the sheriff's department and to better them. And then we bring in other people, and again, we go to a solid foundation of what we got under us to help it build that, uh, that new foundation and the new the, the jail itself in the, in the sheriff's department. We got to uh, got to have the foundation in order to do it. And we got to have the new foundation in order to change the course. But yes, it does need to be changed, and the people that's there can help us change it. And we need to talk to them and find out from them what they see as a problem, and then change that problem. Thank you, boy, Mr. Cooper. I think uh, changing course sounds like a, a big shift turning, uh, and I'm not sure that what my uh, plan is covers that. Uh, some of the things that I would like to do is I would like to increase the level of professionalism uh, across the board. Uh, that does come from some training, but uh, from some very specific training. One of the things that I'd like to do is bring forth a leadership plan within the organization so that there's a natural progression from, uh, in the case of patrol, from a road deputy to a road supervisor to a division commander. Uh, that should be progressive. It should be uh, a competitive uh, type of process and something similar needs to happen within the detention side because you can't come on board and just automatically start supervising people if you don't know how the nuts and bolts of the ship you're working on actually function. I'd also like to stress uh, some things that I believe every law enforcement agency needs to stress. That would be community involvement. Uh, I can't stress enough how important the community is and how important it is for the officers and the deputies of law enforcement in Fremont County to get back in touch with the community that they serve and be able to talk to those people, take their complaints, and not generate uh, complaints back up the chain to road supervisors. A common one that I get is the officer was rude to me. Okay, I've issued probably over 4,000 traffic tickets in my 30-year career, and I've never once had a complaint of rudeness filed against me because you approach people as you would your family members. That, that's my belief as a law enforcement professional. I want to be treated, I want the people that work for me to treat citizens the same way that they would treat a family member. Thank you very much. Skip? All right, you just can't turn around and go the other direction. It's going to take some work and some training and talk to the officers. We're, I know we've got a morale problem there too. And being in the military, I've seen that. So we need to sit down as a sheriff 
and talk to the deputies, find out what the problems are. But we definitely need to stop the way the train's going down the track right now because it's about ready to fall off the bridge and have another crash. So what we need to do is talk to people, talk to the deputies who are there, get their ideas. We've got a lot of good deputies here. Probably some of them got some better ideas than what I've got. And I'm willing to listen to them and stop the train and get better training, get with the officers, find out what they would like to see within the department, and take it to the next step to a higher level. But the citizens, like I say, the citizens are the key operation. But we're going to go back to professionalism, treating people with respect, and getting the job done. And that's going to take a different mindset to these officers. And a lot of them are probably would go along with it. Thank but you. we have to talk to them. We have to find out what their problems are and move forward. We have a, a question. I have a question. <coughs> so you want to get communication from the people. What about other departments, fire departments, Deer Mountain up Copper Gulch, and Penrose and Florence? What about when they want to bring something to your attention? Who is that directed to? All of them. All of them may answer. You got the microphone already, Skip. Go ahead. I let out my hand. Yeah, don't let go. Okay, of it. I agree with you. I and I believe that's part of my citizens' involvement. The volunteers, Howard Fire Departments, volunteer. Uh, Deer Mountain Volunteer Fire Departments, volunteer. Volunteers are the key asset to a operation to run smoothly. Without volunteers, without citizen input, you're going to run into dead space and you're going to have problems. So I definitely am going to listen to what all the departments, the volunteers, the search and rescue, the EMS, they've all been out there, they've all seen situations and, and bring it to my attention or bring it to the officer's attention that's going to be assigned in that area and get something done. Let's not shove it under the rug because it is important. Thank you, Skip. Boy. I believe that you've got to, one person as a sheriff is uh, the fire warden for, well, the fire mountains. Deer Mountain Fire, so they've already got a chief up there. You've got to listen to each department and the people that they're controlling and running the departments. You can find out, again, if they got problems, how do you make that problem go away to betterment that problem and get rid of it to make it a better community for the people? Then you bring in your, again, community involvement. The, I know that each one of these fire departments have dinners up there on Friday nights. They have uh, events going on. They do different things within the community. As a sheriff, we've got to be there to find out what we can do to betterment that community and the safety and welfare of them people. And we can do that, it just takes time. This thing isn't gonna change overnight. It's gonna take a lot of hard work and a lot of involvement from the community and the people that's working at the sheriff's department now. This thing, is, but it can be done. In six months, you would see such a difference in this sheriff's department that it's gonna amaze you. And, uh, but we said six months, we've gotta get the people involved and get it back into this department. People don't respect deputies anymore. They don't respect officers anymore. Very, very few. We've gotta get build that to get it back. And this is part of the problem. We, our deputies has gotta work with the community and the community's gotta work with us. We can do that together. We need each other. Good. Thank you. Mr. Cooper. When I use the uh, term community, it's inclusive and doesn't exclude any group or organization. So I apologize if that's the read you took on that. Um, yes, we do need to have conversations with those groups because they have issues that uh, I need to be aware of if I'm sheriff so that we can adequately address those, put resources in that direction if we need to, mediate if we need to, do whatever we can with the office to make uh, that problem, either mitigate that problem or address it in some positive way. Thank you very much. Okay, this is the time that we've been waiting for. There's only 150 questions left. <laughs> oh, no, one question. This is for all of you. What distinguishes you from the other candidates and why should we vote for you? And we'll start with Skip. Well, I've got a lot of good ideas. I'm not going to say if it distinguishes me from... Two minutes. Thank you. Got a candidate. <laughs> but I've got the experience, the background. 
I've worked in law enforcement in the military, in the military police. I got out of the military. I went into civilian law enforcement. I held out a patrol job. I moved on to chief of police position. I've started my own security guard company. I've managed my own business. As I know nickels and dimes. I'll step on a quarter and give you 30 cents change if I have to. But that's what it boils down to. I have my heart in this. Everybody says, well, why are you running again, Skip? Well, I don't give up. I've seen this train wreck coming since 92, since I've been here. And I've brought to the people's attention, law enforcement. Nobody listened. So I feel that I have the training, the background, and the motivation. And I will work 140%.